How's it going? Good. And yourself? Very well, thank you. Well, thank you for the time and want to dig into the album and, and the Big Mayhem Festival and look in the mm-hmm. mirror a little bit. But uh, I guess we should start with this. Well, I guess we can't call it. Can we call it a comeback? Is it fair to call it a comeback? Absolutely. I would say so. Um, I mean, 13 years away is a long time. It's uh, uh, so, yeah, I would say it's safe to say it's a it's a bit of a comeback and it, a resurgence. It feels great. And it all kind of kicked off with the doc or were you kind of planning it before then? Uh, no, you know, I think the documentary certainly was the catalyst to some of the things. A lot of our fans have been asking for us to tell our story for a number of years, but uh, I think a lot of factors sort of played into it. Uh, the documentary definitely being one of them. Uh, people just sort of uh, rediscovering the band uh, and the early days of our music. Um, you know, I think a lot of trends are very cyclical and things just sure. sort of came back around uh, as far as like metal and, you know, some of the new metal things that are sort of happening these days as well. Uh, so it's been this perfect storm that we are, just happy to be a part of and along for the ride. So, well, I love it. I'm glad you're back. I mean, it, temp- it was technically a hiatus, so there was always mm-hmm. the, the the time to come back. And then a couple of shows, the documentary, and then the mm-hmm. record deal for an amazing album. I'm loving the new album, Fire. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's been uh, the last couple of years have been wild. You know, it went from just a few shows. Uh, reunion wise we were asked to play a couple of really great festivals and that was a, the extent of what we thought we were going to do okay. uh, and then it sort of has snowballed into one thing after another uh, you know uh, seeing uh, our friend Ash from Sumerian Records and then discussing the record deal and then putting out the album sort of in secret over the last year uh, working on that it's been it's been All kinds of craziness. (laughs) I'm curious, your time away from music, were you still playing guitar and writing and and still jamming with your sister? Or did you like put the guitar down and leave it alone? Uh, No, I mean, I definitely still played guitar. I definitely was still involved in music and things like that. It was just a case of uh, the state of, of the band Kitty itself. You know, I think for myself, I'm a very musical person and I always want to be creating and did create in that decade plus with uh, other projects and other bands. It's just, I think Kitty needed time to breathe and uh, for, uh, you know, that interest to sort of come back around again, I guess, you know, we got off the road uh, in 2012 and uh, it just, it just didn't feel right, you know, and we didn't sit down and have a conversation or anything about, um, Oh, we we should be going on hiatus or anything. We just sort of went our own separate ways uh, and just started to live uh, our own lives. And and uh, so that's why it was more of a hiatus. We never broke up. Right, right. No, no big fight or no big blow up. Or- no, no. We still very much love each other. And Mercedes and I obviously are related, and we've always been involved in music together. Uh, for like three quarters of our lives so I I think it is inevitable that Kitty would come back around uh, because it is a big part of our lives absolutely and I'm I'm glad you're back and and still wearing the crown like the the song taking ownership of of, of what you you created and Mm -hmm. and really groundbreaking I mean no one was doing what you do vocally in metal at that time certainly no females were yeah I mean uh, I I can't obviously take credit for all of it. I certainly was inspired by uh, a lot of uh, other bands and also a lot of women, um, you know, before myself. But uh, at the time when new metal was sort of uh, peaking, there there wasn't a lot of female representation. And so we are proud to have been a part of that, proud to have endured the things that we did so that possibly more inroads could be built for other women in extreme music um, to allow everyone to shine the way that they should. Yeah, and it, you've done that. I mean, just looking at the Mayhem Festival, which you're going to be a part of, several mm-hmm. several female acts on that bill. That's the, the thing that jumped out to me. Obviously, you guys, Poppy, and then Ginger as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's some really great representation uh, for women uh, at Mayhem coming up. Uh, I believe Brutus as well, Esquela Grind, 
um, poppy, ginger, us, you know, it's, uh, it's, there's some, there's some really nice, uh, nice representation happening there. And we're really excited to, uh, to play the show in general. It's, it's a great lineup. Yeah. Big, big show. And I mean, mm -hmm. in a way you're kind of the oldest artist on the bill. It's a lot of newer bands uh, on the lineup. Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, a band like It Dies Today, we toured with them back in the day. I know that they have been playing for a long time as well. Uh, maybe so. Maybe we, maybe we are, maybe we are the oldest. I'm not sure when their first Unearth, album came up, but throw down the they were yeah, at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah, yeah, like the you know the 90s, you know, yeah. or with 90s kids. It's cool. <laughs> It was really cool. I talked to Shavo recently, who's going to be there mm -hmm. with his new band, and he was saying mm -hmm. it's going to be great to see you guys. And really, back in the day, it was only Kitty around, the only female act around. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I remember we uh, we played with uh, with you know them years and years ago, System of a Down, um, and uh, yeah, like it, amazing to see. Amazing. It'll be there will be a lot of people that we haven't seen in a very long time at the show, and it's always nice uh, for the festival season and festivals in general to see a lot of bands and people that you haven't seen in a long time. So it's going to be, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's going to be great. And getting you back out there at Glen Helen where you were mm -hmm. 20 years ago with the uh, Ozfest. Mm -hmm. day. Any, any memories from that tour from back then? Oh gosh. Ozfest was wild. Um, it was two months of uh, sheer pandemonium every day. It was like summer camp. Every day was a new adventure, uh, a new crowd, um, and there was a lot of camaraderie between the band. Uh, it, it certainly was like a big summer camp. It's been a long time since we've played there. Um, but uh, yeah, we played, it was OzFest 2000, so we're actually coming up on, uh, oh gosh, twenty like 24 <laughs> years. It's a long time ago. Uh, but we certainly cut our teeth uh, with, with touring uh, and the festival experience uh, there, so we're really excited to come back. And be yeah. able to revisit it all. I'm so excited that Mayhem Festival is bringing that back. It's been a few mm -hmm. years now that there hasn't been that touring. And even though this is just the the one show this year, next year, kicking it off in, in Grand mm -hmm. Town, finally a metal touring festival again, because that's what it was all about, is going for two or three bands and then discovering eight other ones that you fell in love with that day. Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's something really magical about the festival situation, especially a touring festival. Uh, there aren't so many of those that represent extreme forms of music uh, in North America. And I, I'm really uh, hoping that uh, that idea will come back. Uh, and if Mayhem is planning on doing something a bit more across the nation, uh, count us in because that would be so much fun. Um, and it's, it's really needed. I know a lot of people have been like, bring Ozfest back, bring Mayhem back. You know, there were a lot of really great festivals back uh, in the early 2000s and mid 2000s that uh, I think should make a resurgence. Yeah, I can't wait, can't wait, and I've been loving the new album, Fire. Thank I, you. I, I've been wearing out. Uh, uh, we are fire. I mean, that song is amazing. Been playing it, that a ton on the radio, and it seems like it's been on the radio charts since it's come out. Yeah, I, like we are blown away by the response. I mean, the album itself, we sort of wrote over the course of a year in secret, uh, and all, all every step of the way, it was very much like, well we're just putting our best foot forward and I hope people like it. And I hope it's considered a, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, helps to, to bring back this resurgence. Um, and so, yeah, the response has been amazing. Uh, we are shadows is being played on the radio all over the country. And it's, it's just an unbelievable feeling. It's actually, uh, I think it's our highest charting song. Um, and we're just grateful that people are listening. Our fans are, old and new are, are, uh, are interested in Kitty. And yeah, we're just, we're just stoked. We're here for the ride. <laughs> well, I'm loving it. Loving the whole album. I mentioned uh, still wear the crown. Uh, we are fire uh, eyes wide open in the first one. And are you entertained? Is that a little uh, gladiators reference? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a song about youth, you know, and, and the silly things that you might do uh, back when you were young. At Ozfest 2000 or whenever. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Unhinged. <laughs> were there, were there any songs that you were collecting during those those off years, or was it really everything on the album was just written in the past year? Oh, everything that uh, on the album was basically 
started from scratch day one when we knew that we were working towards the goal of writing and recording an album. There wasn't really anything as far as riffs or ideas that had been collected over the years. It was very much a case of like, all right, we have a job to do. Let's get started. You know, how did we do these things in the past? We had to sort of alter the way that we were writing because a lot of us were living in different areas of the country. Uh, but we utilized technology and sent each other riffs, you know, sharing through Dropbox and things like that. Uh, so it's, uh, it, uh, yeah, it's a labor of love. Well, it shows. I mean, it, it's an amazing album. So happy that you guys are back and can't wait to see you at, at the Mayhem Festival. Got one last thing, Morgan, I need your help mm -hmm. with. We're an old school radio station. We do a feature called Mandatory Metallica. All which right. You're part of. And I've been having this little uh, Metallica debate lately and want to see where you oh. come down on it. Me and okay. my buddy are, are, are debating their greatest thrash metal album ever and coming down on opposite sides. His pick is album number two, Ride the Lightning, where I come down on the next one, Master of Puppets. If you had to pick one out of those two, which one would it be? You know, I think Ride the Lightning is actually my my favorite over over Master of Puppets. I mean, like all of the all of 80s Metallica is pretty incredible. But uh, Ride the Lightning for me, I think, is an album that uh, I'm a bit more like into. Uh, Mercedes and I definitely listened to that album a lot. Driving around town in her Cadillac at full blast. Like she had an 80s Cadillac and just like <laughs> the stereo rumbling. So Ride the Lightning is my thing. Ride the Lightning on cassette probably back then. Yeah, yeah yes. In the 80s uh, Cadillac, yes. <laughs> I always just uh, thought the production could have been so much better like it was I know on I know but you know like there is also a little bit of charm to it uh oh. and charm to uh sometimes when when the production isn't quite uh you know like I, I certainly wouldn't want to hear those so songs re-recorded do you know what I mean like right. I know I mean th they're amazing songs and if they were I'm sure that they would they would sound incredible but there's just something about that time capsule uh of the sound and what was available to them uh in the studio and everything like that and just the, their abilities at that time you know it, it all sort of shines through but I think there's something magical about about capturing in that moment you can still feel the dirt dirt under their fingernails on that yes one. yeah yeah <laughs> totally and probably the hangovers too yeah that too yeah do you have a favorite song we can play for you on mandatory metallica would it be something off a ride or any of the albums you pick oh um you know i i would say blackened maybe oh, or yeah. dire's eve also is really yeah. a, a really great one you could surprise me with one of those no you pick you pick either one or maybe i'll play them both for you how about that yeah let's do it let's do it do both blackened both. and dire's eve you got it. Thank you so much for the time. Dream to get to talk to you. And uh, thank you for being back in the new album. And can't wait to see you out there at the Mayhem Festival. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're so excited. And we'll see you then. See you then. Thanks, Morgan. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.